what would be most useful for you in terms of diving into this? Any questions you have about it? I guess, as you can see, it's four pages. So just like help how to shorten it into two pages, but still tell my story. Sure. No, I think it's a fascinating story and I'm glad that you really made it come to life in this essay. The next step is simply, as you said, cutting it down. I agree. Yeah. So as you read this over, what are some spots you think are not personal enough or oversharing details that aren't essential to the story? That's the problem. I don't think anything should be taken out because I'm, I feel like if I take something out, I won't be able to tell my story. Yeah. The, the thing that's so tough about these statements is that you have to be, really be concise and every single word has to count. So we've got to be really critical in the interest of just cutting it down, keep, but keeping the essence. So I think what you've done here is great. Like a rough draft should be longer than the final draft. Okay. That way, if we have four pages here and we've got to cut it to two, those two pages that result will be jam-packed with exactly what you want. Okay. So when I was reading this over, I thought that the story was great, the content was great, but there were some details that didn't need to be there. For example, this, this discussion of the borehole defining what a borehole is. Okay. Is there a way that you could rephrase that to explain it rather than using the term itself? Because I agree the term will be unfamiliar to most readers. Okay, so like write it in a way to still have it there. That's what you're saying. So you can keep that information, but I think that one sentence defining what a borehole is, you don't have space for that here. You got to okay. use some other word that communicates that concept or define it simply in context without taking the time to give a different dictionary definition. Okay, got it. Because like you said, I feel like it is something that a lot of people didn't know what it was. That's why I described it. Yeah. But just do it a different way to cut down on words. Exactly. We have to be really economical with, with words. It's like every word that you include is a word that you're spending out of the two pages that you have. Okay. All right. Then in terms of community development, what can you do to link that more to being an advocate in terms of practicing law specifically? Community development. Say that one more time. Well, a lot of the essay towards the end was talking about community development. Yeah. And so I'm interested to hear more about how you could tie that directly to legal advocacy specifically, because a lot of this is more along the lines of development work. Okay. All right. So I have to figure out a way to put it together. Um, another question I had. Sure. I, I do, I think when you were reading it, you kind of saw that that's my interest, like community development, international development and stuff. So should I like bring that interest up early? or keep, keep the flow, say the story first, and then bring up the interest? I would start with the story and then tie it into legal advocacy specifically. Okay. So starting with the story is great. It's a good hook. It's a good way to get attention. But you do need to weave that together more than what you have here. Because to me, like right now, this essay could be an essay for a master's degree in international development. Okay. So there's a couple things you want to do. You want to make sure that only you could have written this, which I okay. think you're on the right track with, but also why is law school the next natural step rather than working for a non-governmental organization or doing international policy work or getting a master's degree in policy? Got it. It's just kind of like, just mention why law school a little bit sooner. You don't have to necessarily mention it, but the ideas of what a lawyer does, what a legal advocate does, I think you want to include here. So if there's things around getting this getting this development work done, achieving it, what had to be done in terms of negotiating or working with multiple stakeholders? Okay. Because I, I did describe a little bit like the process of getting like the sign and stuff because that's a way of what like lawyers do. That could be something. Exactly. I think that's, you already mentioned it a little bit. I want you to highlight that more and make that more of a focus. So navigating bureaucracy negotiating complex deals to make this sign happen. What was involved and how were you part of that? Okay. 
basically highlight that more and then relate it back to like why law school. Yeah. And you don't have to say why law school directly, yeah. but you'll show that by showing how you were involved as an advocate, how you were navigating this situation. Okay. All right. Um, question about the way I started it. Like when I said, imagine, 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 you think I should keep that or take it out? Well, that's an area that I think is ripe for cutting down. I think okay. it's great that you start with the story, but you can get there a lot faster. And rather than telling the reader to imagine themselves, I would say, show yourself in that situation or show one of the people you're helping in that situation. So if there's, again, an anecdote, if there's a particular individual you can think of or highlight as an example, do that. Or you can describe for yourself if you were ever in that situation while you were there. Okay. Got it. I think, I think you could, the idea is good, but you can get there a lot faster and do it in a more direct way. Because you got here, I think, let's see, one, two, three, at least three sentences, three lines, four, four of them, all starting with imagine, giving different examples of what this would be like. Okay. I think you could cut that down to one sentence. And again, rather than saying, imagine you, say John or Jane or I was in this place. And I was as part of doing this development work. Okay. One second, I'm taking notes. Yeah, of course, feel free. Okay, um, another question. Uh, hold on, look at my see. Hmm. So that's one way I can cut it down by like put the imagine part into one sentence. But you know how like you noticed it was like I was trying to say two different stories. But one was the borehole and one was the sign. Should, should I like try to combine the two stories into one? Maybe that would make it shorter. Well, there's two routes you could take with that. You could either pick one and focus on it. Mm -hmm. but I do think that there's enough you can cut out here. Not necessarily okay. the, the themes or the topics, but details, little word choices here and there. Okay. Tie them together under the umbrella of development work. Okay, so it's more like keep my keep the story, but just cut out like all the minor details. Exactly. So, for example, just to take one here, on page three, you're saying the chief of this of this town in Ghana, and you're giving the chief's full name and then the abbreviation abbreviated uh, Chief Nana, right? Yes. And you're telling the price of the sign. Yes. I don't think we need the chief's entire name. Okay. And I don't think we need the a sentence devoted to simply telling the price of the sign in Ghanaian currency and American currency. Uh, to okay. me, not, those are not core to the story. Okay. Got it. You okay, could say, so like, like, getting this borehole done was difficult. Getting this sign done was difficult. These are the parties involved, and this is how I helped to make it happen. These are the kinds of skills that I exhibited and what I learned from the experience. Okay. Okay, that's a way to cut it down, but still tell the story. Okay. All right. I think I'm okay for now. I have an idea to cut it down. Okay. How about, okay. All right, do you have the essay in front of you? Yes, I do. So the paragraph right after when I was talking about sacrificing a paycheck, do you think that's too much details or... I should still keep that in. I would cut a lot of that, to be honest. Okay. And the reason I would cut it is I think it's a lot of telling rather than showing. If you want to end with the part around international law, you could. But international law is kind of a, a catch-all phrase. Mm -hmm. And... Some, some folks will even say what exactly is an international law is hard to define. So yeah. I would keep it more, and it's something that a lot of folks want to pursue without a real understanding of what it involves. So I would get mm -hmm. a little bit more specific and talk about details of what exactly you would like to do. Not that you have to know what you want to do, but I would just avoid that phrase because it has a lot tied up with it. It's almost become a cliche. 
Yeah, because it's so broad. Right. So if you could say, I want to help development workers achieve their goals in terms of providing more access to clean water, for example. Mm -hmm. And I can understand that there are many stakeholders involved with different interests and there can be local customs or there can be local laws that are difficult to navigate and difficult to comply with. And so I would talk about your experience with your experience that you've had already in Ghana as an example of that to show that you have a true understanding of what's involved. Okay. Okay. And that's a way I can relate it back to the sign and shows that I really do want to be involved in community, community development work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Time to go back to the drawing board, but this was helpful. Excellent. So how do you feel going forward? You feel like you have a clear direction with this? Yes. Cause you know how like, it's like, I've done this draft so many times. So I was just like, I don't, I didn't really want to cut anything out because I feel like if I did, I'm losing the story, but you're basically what you're telling me. I can still tell my story just quicker and faster. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.